I'm Kenneth Chapman, professor of medicine at the University of Toronto, and we're here in my research lab where we research lung diseases, including alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. So my name is Lyle, Lyle Malenka. I'm a respirologist uh, working here in Short Park at the Synergy Respiratory Center. My name is Bruce Ritchie. I'm a hematologist in Edmonton. I've concentrated uh, on the rare blood disorders for the last uh, 30 years or so. I had a full-time job working in the construction industry. I was very active with my kids, coaching their team. You know, they get it, it's not my fault. For the government to take the only thing away that these people had is just sickening. I am the mother of four boys, the grandmother of two, and the first 20 years of my working career were spent as a registered nurse. And the last, oh, 17 or so, I've been, uh, we've been running our own business. I do uh, renovations and woodwork. I opened my company about seven years ago. I have a three-year-old son named Warner. We're expecting our second uh, child in uh, June of this year. I realize that it is a genetic um, disease and I had both of my adult children tested and they have both tested positive. And I also had my brother and sister go and my sister has also tested positive for the alpha one uh, gene, so. We estimated years ago that between five and 8,000 Canadians have the full severe deficiency, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. That figure of 5,000 or 8,000 makes it a rare disease, but one of the more common rare diseases. About the same prevalence as, for example, cystic fibrosis. These people develop quite severe uh, uh, lung issues at, at a fairly young age, you know, uh, you know 40s, 50s, and uh, uh, it really does impact quality of life and, uh, and longevity. It's, it's scary because uh, basically when he gave me the diagnosis, he said, he's like, well, you have, you know, at the rate you're going, you, you, you have about 10 years left. Or, you know, he's like, there's this treatment that uh, we're going to apply for, which is this, this alpha-1 uh, protein uh, therapy. It's proven to help. But how now, now, how can you actually just sit there and go, okay, well, no, I'm sorry. You know, we can't do this for you. You won't cover a, a drug that, yes, it is expensive. It's also saving lives. And if my treatment were to stop, um, my biggest fear, of course, is the lung function declining and eventually to the point where my lungs just won't work anymore. My kids and my grandkids losing me. I would just really like you to just rethink what you're doing to people and their families, not just the people themselves, but their families. My treatment is ending because the clinical trial I'm involved in is ending and I cannot afford the uh, cost. We are going to need to relocate to British Columbia where the treatments are covered, apparently. There's no guarantee in my mind that it would be accessible so that would be my biggest concern, is that I've done all this. These diseases are more costly if you allow them to uh, progress. And if you treat them in an effective way, as we do in our rare blood disorder clinic, then I believe we're able to take people who would be tax consumers and actually turn them into taxpayers. So that's a big, big change for them, big change in their confidence. and quality of life, but also a, a, a big financial difference for, uh, for society. I, I find it hard to explain why treatment is not offered to people, or why they don't have access to it, quite frankly. I can't work, I'm on disability, you know, every single thing that somebody takes for granted, it's not so easy for someone with alpha-1 antitrypsin. The clock is ticking. As we see our patients with alpha-1, we see the growing disability, the increasing obstruction, the increasing need for oxygen, and certainly in my center, ultimately, for many of our patients, referral for lung transplant. So avoiding payment for augmentation therapy now does not ultimately avoid 
very costly medical interventions. Treatment does mean you can continue your life uh, in a normal manner and you don't have to fear um, um, everything ending in five to 10 years. So we have sold our house in Blueville, Ontario. We've sold our business, but if at some point it was covered by Ontario and I could move back, that would be huge. Um, well, family. I'm sometimes embarrassed to speak to my colleagues internationally about alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. Canada, as it turns out, lags well behind other G7 nations, nations with wherewithal and resources. We are not only slow to make the diagnosis, we are very poor at offering treatment. And yet, if I look at countries like Germany, which have developed the structure of managing alpha-1, they aren't treating enormously high numbers of alpha patients. In other words, if Canada simply did what other developed nations did, we would not see a tremendous increase in the cost of care. And by the way, I use Germany as an example, but I could use Brazil as an example. I know that if you are discovered to have alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency in Brazil, struggling Brazil, you will be given the treatment you need for your genetic condition. That's a country that recognizes we should not disadvantage people with a genetic problem. Canada talks a good game, it doesn't deliver.